A lot of you may know me for my Google strategies and think I solely rely on Google ads for my companies, but in 2023, I'm spending as much on Facebook each day as I am Google. And just on one of my websites alone, Facebook is generating me $100,000 a month in sales. So in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down my exact Facebook strategy that has taken me from $0 a month to $100,000 a month in sales. Everything will be outlined in this video. And I recommend you stick around and watch this no matter what stage you're at with Facebook whether you're just starting out and a beginner or if you are already running Facebook ads definitely check this method out because it is working brilliantly for me now very quickly just before we get started I will leave a link in the description to my discord server we have a lot of people in there already helping each other out in the e-com space so it's a great community to get involved in top of the description I'll leave the link for that and as many of you may know already I do have my own Google Ads agency so if you're struggling with Google Ads side of things hit me up we can take a look at that for you as well okay now now, before we get any further into this video, I'm just going to show you my ad account for one of my stores. And this is the ad account that is doing over $100,000 a month in sales through Facebook. And that is tracked sales. As many of you may know, since the iOS update a couple of years ago, Facebook tracking is not accurate in the slightest. But in terms of tracked revenue in the last 30 days, you can see at the bottom £80,683. When converting to dollars, that's pretty much $100,000. And my ad spend is $36,900. So in terms of a tracked ROAS 2.2, and this right here is the last 30 days for this particular website over on Shopify. You can see almost a quarter of a million dollars in sales. Now, obviously a lot of those sales are coming from Google as well, but in my opinion, I reckon if all of this track correctly, we're probably looking at about a 2.75 ROAS, which at this scale is very good. My break even ROAS is around a 1.4. So we've got good margins here, but in this video, like I said, I'm gonna be going through from when I started Facebook ads on this website to where I am now and the exact strategies I used that you can implement and test yourselves. Now, I've broken this down into two phases, phase one and phase two. The first phase is gonna be an ABO testing strategy. If you don't know what ABO means, it means ad set budget optimization rather than the CBOs a lot of you might be used to, which are now called advantage budget campaigns. Anyway, they keep changing things, but for the purpose of video, ABOs and CBOs. Now this is where you set your budget on the ad set level rather than a whole budget for your campaign. Now I like to have good structure within my Facebook ad accounts, and this is for my own and clients as well, because we do take care of Facebook as well on the side for some of our clients. Now I like to have one product per campaign, it keeps things simple and in terms of testing ads it is a lot easier to manage and overall it just helps when you're analyzing things so one product per campaign and what i like to do with this structure i like to have 10 ad sets to start with within this one campaign at five dollars or for my sake five pounds a day and then for each ad set test at least two ads to begin with but please 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 make sure you are testing the same two ads in each ad set so don't have two videos in one and then two images in the other make sure you're using the exact same two ads for every single ad set because we're currently at the stage where we're testing the audiences and not necessarily testing a huge variety of ads and just a quick side note this isn't going to work if your website looks awful and your product sucks i know it's brutal but take some time to make your website make your landing page look really good really professional not spammy get rid of countdown timers i'm pretty sure i've made about three or four videos on this sort of thing already but this isn't a magical recipe that's going to work on a terrible looking website your landing page and your overall customer experience on your website is incredibly important as well now in terms of the interests you want to use i have not used lookalike audiences for years now and i know a lot of you might not know what they are or you might not have enough data to create them yet so forget i even said that we are only going to be using interest based targeting within our ad sets in phase one now in terms of placements some of you might want to select instagram only or Facebook only or Instagram reels or stories for this I like to keep it at auto Facebook knows best at the end of the day and it will allow you to test all of these placements at once and as you begin to spend each day it will slowly optimize towards the best performing ad placement for you and same goes with the age and gender I like to keep that default so both genders and ages 18 to 65 plus unless you are selling a product like women's clothing or 
women's underwear or jewelry then you might want to change it to female but even still with things like jewelry targeting both genders Facebook might show your ads to males that buy your product for their partners for example so in most cases 90% of situations you'll want to leave the age and gender as the default setting now I tend to avoid interests that are very narrow so I tend not to use any interests at this stage that are less than 5 million people in audience size now depending on what country you are targeting if you are targeting a Scandinavian country for example like Norway you might struggle to find a lot of audiences that are above this size but for the purpose of this video UK USA I try and test one interest per ad set and make sure the audience size is at least 5 million this is quite achievable with most interests because you're leaving the age and gender wide open as well now once you have done it your setup like I have just said one interest per ad set and make sure you have those two ads per ad set as well leave that to run for three days try your best not to touch it at all I know it's tempting to kill ads after a day or kill ad sets after a day please try and leave it for at least three to four days but once you have done that go back into your ad account take a look at the results key things you want to be looking at at this stage is whether or not your ad set has had an add to cart or obviously a purchase now for me personally when I look at this data I then go ahead and turn off any ad sets that either don't have any add to carts or any sales and for every ad set I turn off I cycle in a new one testing a new audience so I will always have 10 active ad sets at one time now for the ad sets that are performing well getting add to carts getting purchases I end up increasing the budget of those ad sets 20% every three to four days when I go back and look at the data now this particular strategy phase one I repeated every three to four days until I was spending about $300 a day for this particular business so the ultimate goal with this is to have 10 active ad sets that you know are performing consistently well and by turning off poor performing ad sets and testing new audiences you'll eventually have like I said 10 ad sets with good performing audiences that are providing you with consistent results now you can do this you can keep scaling this but for me I got to the point at about $300 a day and then I decided to switch over to a more broad approach to allow me to scale to a daily ad spend that at the current time I'm making this video is around 1.3k a day in daily ad spend and that moves us on to phase two which is when you can begin to scale something I like to call the CBO scaling phase now if you are watching this video and you already have some good data within your Facebook ad account if your pixels collected a lot of data from purchases add to carts things like that you can always go ahead and test this particular method first rather than going back and testing the phase one ABO method and this is because based on the data that you have in your account Facebook will already have a decent idea on who your ideal customer will be so you don't need to go in and use loads of interests targeting now similarly to the ABO method I like to keep it at one product per campaign but this time we're using the CBO method now if we just hop on over to Facebook here they have changed the name for CBO but when you're making your campaign I like to click just the manual sales campaign here very quickly and then when you are in the campaign setting screen just like this is what yours will look like I turn on the advantage campaign budget here and then you can select your budget and this will be the entire budget for the campaign and then you don't have to set the budget on an ad set level now let's say you are at the point with the ABO method you're spending around 200 300 dollars a day I would personally go in and start at a 200 dollar a day budget with this CBO strategy because you can quickly get to the point where you're spending hundreds more a day but 200 dollars a day is a good amount to start with now with this I only use one to three ad sets per campaign one ad set is completely broad no interest targeting literally no changes whatsoever other than the target country so for example for me USA I leave the gender and age default I leave the interests default as in no interests again with the placements leave that on auto for the other one or two ad sets I will put one interest in each of them but this will be an incredibly broad interest for example in the USA these interests will have over 100 million people inside of them this is just to guide your campaign in the early stages but eventually you'll probably find you'll end up turning off those interest ad sets and you will only have a single ad set active in your CBO that being your completely broad one and this is because you are not restricting Facebook's AI machine learning and giving them complete freedom to learn and optimize and to go out there and find the customers for your business whereas with the interests you're restricting the size of your target market and believe me Facebook is incredibly powerful at finding and putting your ads in front of the correct people that will increase the likelihood of them converting on your website interests are really good I never really tested the broad strategy that I'm mentioning now but over the last
last few months, I have massively lent towards this broad strategy, this broad CBO strategy, and has really made me see just how powerful Facebook ads is. Now, I'll quickly show you one of my campaigns that's structured like this in a minute. And like I said at the start of the video, I now spend as much a day on Facebook as I do with Google. And that is thanks to this method because it has allowed me to scale immensely. And similarly with phase one, with regards to scaling this strategy here, you want to look back every three to four days at your campaign's ROAS. If it's a ROAS you're happy with, then you can go ahead and increase your budget by 20%. But if you're unhappy with it, you can reduce it by 20%. This will almost tell Facebook that you're not pleased with the results they're getting you and will almost prompt them to almost try harder to get you better results. Because at the end of the day, Facebook want you to spend more money on their platform because if we're doing well, Facebook are doing well as a business as well. Now, just jumping back into my ad account here, if we just take a look at this campaign here. Now, this is a campaign I launched, I think, three weeks ago. Now, you can see I haven't started this one on a $200 a day budget. Because my ad account has so much data, I now don't use phase one. Phase one is definitely a more beginner focused method if you don't have too much data. But now, if I'm testing a new product on Facebook, I go straight in with the broad CBO method. So when it's a new product, I reduce the budget just a little bit just to see how we do. But you can see this one here is currently at £50 a day. In the last 30 days, I think it's been running for two or three weeks off the top of my head, 151 tracked sales, £10.60 per purchase with a 3.6 ROAS, which is incredibly good. Now, if we switch back here to the last three or four days, you can see the cost per purchase has gone up quite significantly by 50% or so. And that is why I am not scaling this budget up any further at the moment. I'm going to leave it be and basically allow Facebook a bit more time to optimize. And then once this cost per purchase comes back down, I'll then start to increase the budget. But if we just click it here, you can see there's only two ad sets in this campaign. I started off with this one here. This was a broad interest one, like I mentioned, over 100 million audience size. But you can see over the last 30 days, once we've switched back, this only got two purchases and at a cost per purchase that was three times as much as the broad ad set so now only the broad ad set exists and that is what is giving me the good results and again each of these ad sets would have had two ads within them so it's a very straightforward structure i hope i've done a good job at explaining this but if you do have any questions please drop a comment down below i will respond to everyone or if you want to reach me on twitter or instagram please do reach out on there just one final point before we end this video i just want to stress that this isn't a method where you can get to you set it and leave it and don't do any work on facebook because once you're spending quite a lot a day you will find your ads will eventually fatigue and you will need to start cycling new creatives but the beauty of this is because you're not faffing around with testing new audiences you can put all of your energy into creating top quality ads for your companies so every two or three weeks for me personally i'll cycle in two or three new ads whether that be images or new video ads i'll cycle them in see if they work leave them there for a couple of weeks if a new ad isn't performing well i'll simply turn it off but if it does perform well i just leave it in there with all the other ads that are doing well too so again i hope that makes sense i hope you find this facebook strategy useful this is probably the most in-depth facebook video i have made to date if you enjoyed it and you want more please do let me know down below more google content will be coming soon as well but other than that thank you very much for watching